All right. A lot of you guys know I'm a crazy MMA fan. And a couple of months ago, I was scrolling through my Instagram and I saw a man by the name of Henry Hooft followed me on Instagram. I was so excited because Henry is one of the greatest coaches in the world, in my opinion. He's also um, one of the best MMA coaches in the world. He uh, coaches a fantastic group of guys down in Florida, which I've been following for a while. I watch a lot of their fights. I've been to a lot of their fights. I've, I've watched Henry in action on the side of the cage. I've felt the emotions that he's gone through in leading these guys um, into combat, you know, in, in terms of the, the way that a coach has to sit there and just kind of relinquish any sort of real power and say, all right, it's in the hands of the athletes now. So listen, uh, Henry was formerly the head coach of Samford MMA in Florida. It's now Kill Cliff FC. Uh, they've just started this new um, company down there and they've got some of the craziest fighters in the world. And I had the pleasure of sitting down with Henry and chatting with him on this podcast. He was kind enough to give me some time. Uh, we did have a couple of technical difficulties up front. So I just want to let you know that a couple of questions early on have been kind of cut and paste because I was having some issues with my sound. His sound was coming through fine. Um, so the first four questions are going to be a um, little bit chopped up here and pasted in. Hopefully it works out okay. Nate's going to work some of his magic. So here we go with the podcast of Henry Hooft. All right, here we go. This one's a great honor. Henry Hooft, uh, welcome to my podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing fine and the honor is on me. Um, yeah, nice to meet you here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I've been uh, checking you out a little bit. Uh, first of all, I love swimming. I'm not good at it, but I love it. <laughs> I'm from the Netherlands. We had some good swimmers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, like I said before, I, I like to go, uh, go, I like to talk to people uh, that are um, in other sports and at a certain kind of level. So uh, you learn from different directions. So for me, it's very interesting to have this talk with you, you know. We never met personally, but this is a cool way to connect. It is, yeah. It's, this is awesome. And, you know, I appreciate you following me on Instagram. I followed you because I'm the same way. I'm very interested in uh, the way that the best in the world train and coach. And I, I'm always looking, you know, one, one of my favorite things to do is listen to interviews after a win or a loss, right? Like I, I love listening to basketball players, baseball players, MMA fighters, like, you know, after a win, they go and sit and they talk about, and they're a little bit more open and honest, you know? And then if they lose, they're very raw and emotional and it's it's just there. And so they're, again, they're very honest. So I love listening to real interviews like that. And um, when I was doing this research on you, Henry, I was watching some of your videos and I could see, I could see your face. Like I can see your expression. I can see the emotion. I can see the work that you've put into the 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 performance, right? Like it's visible on your face, and I'm, I can relate to that. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's um, I think it's it's very intense and it's very honest, especially I think in um, especially in the fight game. You know, especially if you if, if you fought you fought yourself too. You know how lonely that sport is and how brutal it really is that people don't really understand of course we approach it a little different uh because we are we're martial artists but uh, it's a very lonely sport and uh yeah it's comparable to swimming you know i think mm -hmm. because you have to do a lot of stuff on, on your on your own mm -hmm. um, and as a coach you kind of learn that you need a lot of people to create one really really good fighter you know it's mm -hmm. not so easy mm -hmm. and then the emotions during the fights before and after are, like I say to my students, they fight three times a year and we fight every week, nearly every two weeks, the big emotions, the big ups and the big downs that does something to you. But um, I kind of like it. I like, I like, I like, I really am uh, passionate about uh, these moments right before fight or well, after fight, win or lose, you know, uh, makes life really interesting, especially if you're old and you're not uh, be able to compete yourself anymore. It's still a little bit of fighting in you that's there, you know. So yeah. it's really, yeah. it's really raw. So it's really cool. In terms of mentality, you always talk about keep it simple. How do you keep fighting simple? Well, um, well, I, I think uh, I, myself, I, I was a technical fighter. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm interested in skills, 
Um, I know fighting, a big part of fighting is your mentality and is your will. Uh, that's a big part of it. But I still think that skills are really, really important. And I think that really simple things in general in life too are really difficult, really. Uh, people maybe think that it's uh, very complicated, but it is not. You make it yourself uh, most of the time much more complicated. Like I always say, I live a very simple life. I married 35 years with the same woman. Uh, I do this, the days that I do on a daily basis are very simple, are really the same things that I do just to be consistent on myself. And um, and in training and in fighting, I, I try to approach it as simple as possible because fighting is already so hard. So there's so much to going on at the moment when you're in the middle of that fight, when you're in the cage or in the ring with another person that tries to hurt you or tries to beat you, that you don't have a lot of uh, options, a lot of, lot of time to, uh, to choose from so many options. So what I mean to say is try to keep your things so simple as possible, but do the things right. So when the time comes when you have to make certain decisions that you don't have to overthink too much and just go with the, with the right things at the right moment. I think it's more important to know when to do something uh, uh, than what to do only, you know? So uh, mm -hmm. that's why, I, that's what I really mean with simple because it's not really simple to, to throw a good jab or to, to land a great kick or a nice takedown. That's not simple at all, but you make it simple when you drill it and when you train it on a constant base, you know? That's mm -hmm. what I mean with that. You've got a lot of guys that walk into your gym, Henry. What are the separating factors of those that could end up becoming champions? I think, like I just said, consistency, uh, that you see but when when they just walk in it's first of all it's of course i'm very privileged that i have uh, a, a only pro gym so we don't have regular students we don't have people that uh, never trained or never most of the guys that are at my gym already have some experience in fighting or or are really talented uh, wrestlers or really talented strikers that want to transition to mma so but what, what i see most of the time is uh, and that's very important for our group of people that me and my partner greg jones who, is, uh, who was one of the best wrestlers in uh, in USA history, is my partner. When we look at it, we, we try to create a, a culture in, in our gym where people can uh, can train and can, uh, can get their skills at the highest level under the right circumstances. So we not only look for people that have skills, but we also look uh, to people that fit the picture and fit the culture. Because mm -hmm. like I said, again, you can, there's only one champion in one weight class, but you need probably... 20 uh, training partners to create one of these champions. But what I what I can say is that most of the people that, uh, that 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 became championship material fought for a belt or won a belt, like Kamar Usman or Gilbert Burns or all these people, Michael Chandler, uh, Ong La, all these guys had one thing in common: they're very consistent and they really, mm. uh, like I said, they're also family people. Family, they have children. They they live a regular life. You know, the only thing they do is they train really hard, they fight hard. And, uh, and yeah, and they're very dedicated and consistent. And I, and I really, uh, that's what we look for. Like, so when somebody wants to join our team and he's a professional fighter, we do some uh, some scouting, we, we, we look at them and then they come to our gym for two weeks. Then we see how they fit. Are they real good team members? Um, because that's one thing that we try to change in our gym, at our, in, in our team, is that we want to change the level of uh, professionalism in MMA. Mm. MMA is still mm. a very young sport, and you, I, I think that the discipline that you have from judo or karate or these uh, traditional sports, the discipline is not in MMA yet. So a lot of people uh, they are, think they're entitled entitled to a lot of stuff, or when they win five fights, they think they're already high level fighters. Mm. While in mm. other other sports, you go through the years before you even uh, are able to do a fight. Um, so we try in the gym to create that too, that you're not entitled, you need to work for things, you know, it's, it's not just given to you because in fighting, it's not given to you too. You got another person that tries to beat you and tries to take your checks. So <laughs> that's, I think that's what, what we try to create from the standard, from the, from the moment when they come in. But Brett, sometimes people surprise you too. You see people walking in mm. and mm. then you think, well, I don't know. Because the, uh, nobody knows how uh, how a world champion looks like. He can look look like an ordinary guy, or he can look like a monster, you know. But and then they surprise you. Two years later, you look around. Wow, these guys are still here, and look how good they're doing. They changed mm -hmm. their lives, you mm -hmm. know. So uh, yeah, it's always you have a feeling. You can see it, but you can see it when they start working and their years. They put their years in, and they keep it consistent, and they they keep being good teammates, you know. How do you create separation with other coaches, Henry? 
Do you have a philosophy that you stick to? Yeah, I think, well, I think, I, of course, I come from traditional sport. I started with karate and after kickboxing. Um, well, that's why, I, I mean, I think, I just think, I, I've, been, I've been raised, uh, uh, for, for an example, if somebody's doing, what, if somebody's doing a certain kind of training, I, uh, or doing some, um, some drills on the back or doing something, instead of looking at it uh, and saying they're doing wrong stuff, I will ask them why they do something. Mm. Because maybe these people have a very good explanation to do it different than me. So instead of saying that other people are not good, I will try to figure out why they're doing it. I think, I think that's the base. There's a lot of people in, uh, in sports and in my sport too, a lot of other trainers and coaches, uh, that are, um, openly, uh, criticizing other trainers and, uh, and also commentating on fighters and fights. And I think if you are a trainer and you have a certain kind of way of working, uh, you just need to stick to yourself and you need to believe in what you do yourself, but that doesn't mean that other people do it wrong. Um, mm -hmm. I think we need to stand above that. I think we need to be very professional. I think, um, if you have a thought of something, you don't need to say it openly nowadays on social media. So, uh, and also as a trainer, what I do with my fighters, I'm not a big game plan guy. That's the difference I think that I have with some of the people. I believe in skills. So I will, I want my, my fighters to train, uh, skills and get better everywhere. So whoever they fight, they always have a good chance of, uh, making a good fight or winning fights instead of game planning towards one certain kind of fighter. And then in MMA, a lot of things can happen. They can, uh, they can, they can pull out of the fight. People can get injured or a short notice fight. You get a different opponent with a different stance and a different height. So that's why in my gym, everybody trains with everybody. The smaller guys train with the bigger guys. There's no, uh, personal training on the side. Everybody trains in the group. That's what we have in our gym. Uh, because I just think that you need to use your skills against everybody, anybody. And then also think your confidence, if you look at yourself more than you look at other people, then your confidence will grow. Yeah. That doesn't mean that when, uh, when we fight, uh, uh, we fight a striker that we don't work on the striking or on the wrestling. But I think in general, I think if you have all the skills, the skill set, and you learn how to uh, anticipate and not overcoach these people, give them a little bit of cre creativity and mind for themselves. I think uh, they will create their style instead of me just program programming them because that means that I want them to fight the way I want to fight. And that's not the way I really want them to fight, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If you understand what I mean. We individualize training in the pool. So why not individualize your nutrition? Erica Barney of Barney Wellness Building will help you and your swimmers get exactly what each athlete needs through genetic testing and personalized nutrition plans. So stop guessing what you should and shouldn't be putting into your body. Athletes within a few weeks have noticed they're recovering faster because they're fueling their body with what they need and staying away from what their body hates. Erica understands swimming. She gets it. She's worked with over 20 Olympians, including the fastest man in the world, Caleb Dressel. Group discounts are available, so go to Biney Wellness Building and get in touch with Erica today. That's Biney, B-E-I-N-E, wellnessbuilding.net. Swim Angelfish. Swim Angelfish is an online certification program that strengthens your teaching curriculum to serve swimmers of all abilities. Swim Angelfish will prepare you and your instructors with the skills to teach swimmers with autism, physical disabilities, anxiety, sensory and motor conditions, and more. Learn to teach skills faster and with more comfort with Swim Angelfish. Apply for an only Alpha Pool Product Scholarship and receive up to 50% off your certification. Go to swimangelfish.com today to apply. Tell me about this. How do you control the wins and the losses in terms of emotion, right? Like you, you obviously don't want to get too high for a win and and you don't want to get too low for a loss and then there's also fights where you're managing many athletes on the same night so you you got the the high of somebody winning early and then the the loss comes in and then you've got to go back to the the back room again and try and figure out your motion so how do you manage that yeah that that's that's a very good question brett and that's that's something that i i 
I try to explain sometimes when we go through certain kind of moments in the gym that for a coach it's it's really it's 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 really hard. I mean, again, I have a lot of professional fights myself, so I know how it is. It's difficult when you fight on fight night, but the coach also have a lot of uh, a lot of things on things on his mind, uh, a lot of stress too. Um, mm -hmm. We don't really feel it as stress, but it's still a lot of pressure, especially if you if you uh, if you compete at a high level. Uh, like the UFC and Bellator, these shows where everybody's watching you and everybody, especially if they think something of you and you're supposed to be a great guy, a great coach, the, mm -hmm. these eyes all, are, are all on you and the fighter. So it's, it's, it's not easy. You know, I think, uh, I think of course, if you competed yourself, I think it's much easier to handle these emotions. But what you just said was right. You cannot get too high on a win because the highs and lows in fighting are so big. You also mm -hmm. have to understand in, in, in fighting in the MMA, uh, they they get a, a, a check when they show up and they got a check when they win. So if you mm -hmm. lose a fight, that means you got only paid half. Uh, so there's a lot of pressure on winning fights, you know. Also, in some organizations, if you lose two, twice or three times, they will, they will just get rid of you and mm -hmm. get another young fighter in there. So there's so much more pressure in MMA, especially in the big organizations. Uh, to do it right so and this, these guys get only a couple of times a year the chance me as a fighter as a coach i just try to uh of course i have a lot of experience now i just try to uh, keep my emotions to me um like like i want my fighters to fight uh, not a lot of emotions just try try to stay calm but it's not easy because uh, all these influences from outside at that moment they are really big um and another thing uh, it's not a sport, it's fighting. You know, sometimes you see your fighter losing. Uh, he sits there with a broken nose or a big cut mm -hmm. on his face with one check in his hand. Yeah, that's hard because they're still your students, you know. it's mm -hmm. uh, There's still people that you work with and travel with for so many years. So you want them to do good. So you want to do good for yourself, for the team, because you're a winner. Yeah, you have a winner mentality. But you also want these guys to be safe and uh, and make their money. Um, but as a coach, it's very important to keep these emotions with you because a fighter will see and will feel if you're nervous or if you're worried about the outcome or something. So um, you're right. with experience, uh, I've been doing this since competing since 1985 or something. So I've been doing this for a long time. I learned to handle it, but it's still very difficult sometimes flying back in the plane, sitting next to your fighter and looking at his face while he's half sleeping because on the way back from the fights they look at them you think shit we could we could <laughs> the kid has one check yeah he's cuts on his face go back to his family and has to wait three months for another opportunity because we right. don't we cannot do it right in a couple of weeks you fight only three times a year and you cannot fight the same guy again quickly you know so it's it's very different yeah you know so swimming is is very similar in the sense at the highest level where you know you, you're going to be judged on your performances and sometimes when performances are going well everybody wants to come and train with you because they think you've got some magic sauce or whatever it is but i imagine uh, you know at samford mma in in florida where you are you know there's they're, they're certainly hype behind your program at, at certain points how do you select who walks in your door and then how do you instill belief in the people that are fighting in the same weight class right like so you you, you have this particular person over here and then you have this person in the same weight class, but you have to get them to believe that you believe in them uh, more so than the other person. It's, it's a difficult situation, right? Yes, it's very diff difficult. And of course, I've been in that situation when um, when Gilbert Burns and Kamara Usman uh, fought each other, of course, mm -hmm. um, training with both these guys for such a long time, Kamara for um, probably eight, nine years, and then Gilbert, seven years, mm -hmm. always training together, helping each other bring each other kind of level and then at one moment uh, they have to fight each other and um, yeah that was hard it's very hard because you need to make uh, you need to make it a, a, a you pick a side they think but I didn't pick a side I stayed out of these training camps because I just think uh, like I just said I brought I, I work with these guys the skills are good both of these guys I gave them the same attention in all these years they have to fight each other because they're the best in the world so that's gonna happen that's probably a, a luxury problem it's not easy but uh, we have that with a couple of guys because we have so many uh, high-level fighters at certain kind of weight classes that, that will happen. Um, so it's not an easy thing. 
but again, like I said, uh, for them it's just uh, work. And and you saw that during the fight, you saw that after the fight, and and after the fight, uh, Kamaru was back training uh, with us in the gym, and also even helping Gilbert out for his fight with Chimaev. But uh, but yeah, that's not easy, and um, and it's also not easy to uh, to say yes or no to new uh, new students that uh, or new fighters that want to join the team, because uh, at one side you cannot have a hundred people on the mats. Mm. On the other side, you also run a business, so it's important to have enough people so you get enough income uh, to get the, the business running. Because although we have uh, very good sponsors and partnerships, MMA's uh, gym still do don't make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. We as a professional team, we're changing that with big sponsors. We just changed uh, our, sponsor, our, 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 uh, our name title from our, our, from our team at this moment. We changed it from Sanford MMA to Kill Cliff FC. That that, mm. that was a big thing. So uh, we 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 redoing the gym and everything. But that's another thing to work to more to the professional levels. Yeah? So mm. we get more income from sponsors. Uh, so it's easier to say yes and no to fighters if you have income from other sides. So you can pick and choose and can make your team the way you want it. Um, and until now, it was very hard to say no to people that make a lot of money. But but we still do it. We still uh, see on some kind of people that we think it's not a good fit for us. Uh, but do you ever yeah, ask the yeah, fighters yeah, permission? Complain. Like, would, would you go to a guy like Kamaro and say, hey, would you mind if this guy enters the gym? Yes, we have. We have. We call it so-called so, so team captains mm -hmm. in our gym. Like you said, Kamaro and Gilbert Burns and Robbie Lawler and uh, Michael Chandler, Michael Johnson. Yeah, we, we talk about it when it's when it's when we make the decisions as leaders and as, as as owners of the business, we make the decision. But when we have people in certain kind of weight classes of people that we think like that, I don't know about that. We we will inform them and ask them because it's important for the culture that we all on one uh, that we all sit on one line. At the end of the day, we make the decisions. But of course, we want the input from these guys. So we have team captains that uh, that, that that talk to the fighters and that also talk to us about. A certain kind of people who are being there or not being there so yeah that's really uh that's mm. a really important thing for us to have the most yeah. experienced guys with uh with an open and a good mind helping us out making the, the right decisions and uh till now we can't complain uh, like yeah. i said on a daily basis i get emails fighters just a korean kid a ufc kid came yesterday chinese kid is fighting this week we the most the nice thing is we have 33 different nationalities in our gym mm. 33 Wow. And all everybody works with each other, and everybody works good with each other. There's no problems yeah. in our gym, so uh, yeah. Till now we did really well, but like like you said, Brett, it's right. You, you need to find the right people for your group. Yeah. That's really important. Do you ever do anything outside of the gym to kind of um, instill that 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 togetherness, that team, that family bonding? Like, do you guys do uh, dinners together or anything like that? Yeah, we do. We do sometimes. We at our gym we have a very nice lounge. So what we do is when sometimes when, when when some of our guys fight bigger fights, we are in there with the whole team and the kids and the wives and we uh, we have food mm. uh, or we have a poker evening, mm. uh, and also the, the the guys under uh, with each other, uh, they are very good connected. Uh, families are cool. The children are all cool. So sometimes they hang out. They have a barbecue with other people. Uh, we have a big group chat where everybody's on that chat, because again. For us, we we, we, we kind of run our, our our team as uh, as as people do, do in soccer and in the NBA and everything. We have a morning and evening practice, and if you're not in the morning practice, we want to see uh, a text message why you're not there mm. because uh, we want to have we want to have the control. We want to see where you're at and not just come train whenever it fits you, but mm. come train when the training hours are there. You know that's your job. I don't believe in training camps. I believe. The moment you sign up to be a professional fighter, you, that's it's all one training camp really. Instead of, mm. uh, yeah, I only come to the gym six, eight weeks before my fight because that means that you really think only about yourself and not about your teammates. So you need to be mm. there the all year round. Of course, after your fight, you take a week off or something, or two weeks. But uh, these guys need to be in the gym as much as possible. So, uh, but we do a oh. lot of stuff. We have a good, uh, we have a really good environment there with with all the guys yeah that's awesome i love that uh, what about like outsiders do you do you ever have outside people from different sports different teams you know successful people do, do you ever get them to come in and and talk to the athletes or influence them in any way like do, are they open to that kind of thing 
Yes, yes. No, uh, we are very open in it because, um, like I said before, that's why it's cool to talk to you. It's it's uh, it's very important for these guys to see that most of these guys with five, six, seven fights, a uh, four, four, five year training to talk to people that uh, are been tra training and uh, being good at something all their lives. Mm -hmm. And also, like you said, the mental side. Uh, that nowadays, uh, back in the day when I was fighting in the 80s and the 90s, we didn't have a mental coach and everything. Our mental coach was our trainer and we trusted him and we just fought. It's a little bit changed and now people all talk about mental coaching. Well, I'm okay with that, but I'd rather have a mental coach that knows something about fighting and knows something right. about our sport. Right. Um, because again, fighting is not sports really. It's sports, the athletes, they train, but it's fighting. Fighting is a totally different thing than anything you can imagine. So it's very difficult to understand uh, that uh, some people say maybe you have to breathe like this or you have to do this or that when the person never has been punched in the face or never been really <laughs> tired or never been so nervous or scared of their life. So that's me, very hard. Me, I, I've never been punched in the face. <laughs> no, but that, it, it doesn't mean that you're not, you cannot, uh, we cannot learn from you. We can, but you are a high level athlete. Mm. Um, it's not that we don't, th that we only want to talk to high level people, but it's a high level gym. Mm -hmm. And I just think that, uh, uh yeah people that that are are, are are putting everything in their sport career uh just to talk with these people that do the same things that we are doing or trying to create uh, will uh will make us as trainers better so we can make the students better but also the students need to learn need to learn and listen uh of what it takes to train and fight at the highest level or compete at the highest level, if it's cycling, if it's swimming, if it's whatever it is, it's it's very hard. And um, I think it's very important for especially young people to know that most of the people have a, have a job next to their sports mm. instead of coming to the gym and asking for sponsorships and thinking that everything is good. Right. Most of the Olympic athletes in the beginning, they, they have the normal school or jobs. And then later on, they got a little money from the government. That's nothing right. really for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, we are really open to it. We sometimes have people coming uh, over to uh, to talk with the guys. Um, we have a couple of people that are good at money managing. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what they're saying. They come to talk with the guys because that's another thing that's very important in our sport. They don't they uh, they don't they're not educated enough to know mm -hmm. that uh, fighting is only a very short period to make mm -hmm. some money. So don't spend it on uh, on stuff that's not important. So we try to educate that with them. So yeah. And we want that doing more and more and more uh, the education and stuff around fighting. So it's very interesting. Yeah. So uh, next time uh, when you're yeah. in Florida, you need to stop by and not. I do. Just I do. I home. need to stop by. I was down in Florida on the weekend and uh, I was swimming with Ryan Lochte and a couple of other very, very famous swimmers. Um, Anthony Irvin, Olympic champion. That. And, uh, and I, and I saw, I saw you that. on Instagram. I saw you were running, you know, out on the street with your with your fighters uh, on the on the freeway, and I was like, I'm not going to mess with him today. He's he's running, so I'm not I'm not doing that. But, uh, <laughs> but I need to get down there and do that. Nobody likes running in my team too. <laughs> no, <they have> to <laughs> no one likes running. Uh, I'm a swimmer. I don't like running. But listen, uh, to me, body language is very important, right? Like w w the things that you tell yourself in your head are going to manifest into your body and the language and, and the way that you walk. I think you know, for for a fighter walking down into the cage is going to be a huge thing walking into the cage presenting themselves in front of the other fighter the body language is going to say a lot of things right do you do you work on that yes i mean i mean i tell all the fighters all the time that it's so important if you really look at my videos that 90 percent of my fighters are not sitting down between rounds mm. and that's the reason for it i'm i i believe uh, when you uh, sit on the chair, first of all, I think you need to sit on the chair when you're home uh, watching a movie or just chilling out. I think that chair is, uh, for a three-round fight, is very overrated. I think you just need to stand up. I think you need to look across the cage and see your opponent sitting down on his chair and you are standing there and breathing good and listening to your coach for uh, one minute. Uh, so that's one thing that I really do always. And body language, you're right. I tell them when you get in the cage, make sure that you know where you're at. Look around you, where everybody is, where the judges are, where the where where, where the where the coaches are sitting. So feel 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 
feel like you are going into a place that you recognize things and everything. Mm. Uh, and when you when your opponent walks in, make sure that you uh, that you, you 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 make him feel that you're confident and that you're ready to go. You don't need to look angry at somebody else to be confident. You mm. need your presence, your body language, like you said, is very very important. You know, and uh, and then also uh, when the fight starts, make sure that you uh, let people know that you come to fight, not dancing mm. and uh, doing other stuff. You come to fight. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a couple of things that we really do. But not sitting on the chair between the rounds is something that I really, really, uh, maybe once in a while somebody sits and I'm like looking at them like, why are they sitting on the chair? But most of the time my fighters all standing up and just breathing and just, uh, yeah. But I, but I, again, it's very, it's, it's training too. I don't want people sitting on the floor. I, I, uh, I'm really, uh, I'm really into that. Yeah. Yeah. What about this? Uh, how do you how do you know when to say something and when not to say something? When it's time just to let the fighter fight, and when it's time to step in and say we've got to get something going here, you know, and 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 flick a switch, right? Like that's the art of coaching, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's it, and it's 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 also the problem is if you were there alone in the corner, it's maybe even easier, but you're with two other guys and. Mm. There we go. My my phone got overheated in the car, so it oh, died on me. Oh shit! That's what happened. I was like, "What happened?" Oh, shit. Damn. The phone the phone overheated, so it died on me. So I had to walk back in the house now. And fuck. well, if the phone overheated, you must have been hot. So I apologize for keeping no, you in that car. I, I'm sweating like crazy because I couldn't put the air conditioning on. <laughs> but it's all good. I'm trying to fix it now. We can start from back where we left, right? Yeah, well, the problem is the the internet in the house is terrible. I don't know why. Are you on Are you on Wi Fi in the house? Oh, let let me see one more time because one second.
Oh, I made you get back in the car again. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but I'm gonna put the. Maybe if I. Wait, what? This, this put the air conditioner, but no sound. You think, but now I close the car, so now I'm good for a while. You hear me good now? Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, that works. So I probably we have probably like 15 minutes more before it overheats. <laughs> yeah, sorry. What was the question that I asked you that we were answering? I can't remember. Uh, oh. The question was that you, um, uh, we were at the, how difficult, oh yeah, the body language, when people go, mm -hmm. uh, the body language, how important that was uh, in fighting and in doing the fight, you know? Yeah, I let, let me ask you this. Uh, let, let me start with a new question here. So I'm going to say, look, ego for, for anybody is important and confidence is important. How do you manage a fighter who needs to make improvements? You need to tell them in a way that doesn't damage their confidence or ego, but you, you have to get through to them. Like you have to make improvements here. How do you manage that? In the fight or during training? Uh, during training. During training. Well, yeah, that's very hard because, um, I mean, th they need to trust you enough to, uh, to to really believe what you're trying to tell them. But it, mm -hmm. it's true, well, especially if fighters getting better at one certain kind of level, mm -hmm. it, it will be a little bit harder because what happens when fighters get better, more people get, get surround, uh, surround them. So more people get involved. And they listen to much more people. In the beginning, they're just listening to you and a couple of teammates. And it's very normal. They get famous and they win fights. And so they got influence from outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so that changed their minds a little bit. Also, when a fighter loses once or twice uh, in MMA, they, uh, they want to uh, move to another gym or another coach, yeah. another trainer, because they think somebody else has the magic. Yeah. And then later on, they figure out that nothing really changes. Uh, the most important mm -hmm. thing uh, is you. You need to look in the mirror after a win or a loss. Right. But um, but yeah, sometimes sometimes a little bit of an ego, and 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 that's okay. You know, you need to have that as a fighter. But uh, but um, you just need to make sure that they trust you. And also, if you have a background in fighting and you have good uh, you have good results and you have good students, they. Uh, they make it much easier for you to uh, to talk to certain kind of people with a big ego. But uh, yeah. they always say, we don't want people with ego, in, but you need people with ego because you yeah. need to be egocentric a little bit when you're a fighter. So you need to know the balance. And I think that's all. I learned all, all of that with experience. You know? Right. Good luck. Hey, hey. Hi. I didn't Sorry, yeah, my wife go in the car, but she can't because there's no uh, air conditioning here. Oh, yeah. So, Sorry. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, so you, it, it, people with, yeah, it, sometimes you have it. it. I don't call it really drama in the gym, but sometimes you you feel that some kind of people think certain kind of way about stuff. Yeah. But then you let them know, you know, uh, with your words and your manners and your way of teaching and everything that you think uh, it has to be done a little differently, you know. And, uh, and sometimes they are right. So then you just follow the path. But at the end of the day, they need guidance. And, uh, and you need, and I think, to uh, to be leading fighters, you know. So yeah, is that the same with promotion? I guess like they they've, they've got to promote themselves in a certain way. All athletes have to promote themselves these days to be noticed and to be seen and to make money and to kind of you know get interest from sponsors and things. So like there is a certain amount of promotion that needs to happen. But so how do you control that aspect of it? Of like preparing them to be the best fighter they can, but then also having some sort of influence in the way they promote themselves. Yeah. Well, again, I, I'm also not a big fan of people that uh, talk a lot of trash and uh, all that social media stuff and all that, but they need to sell the, the tickets they say and everything. And I just yeah. believe that skill skills pay bills. If you're a good, great fighter, of course, there's entertainment, but entertainment can also be in skills, you know? Uh, and some people don't have enough skills, so they do it the other way around. They scream a lot and start to make a lot of uh, drama for the fans, you know, uh, yeah. especially for un, uh, for fans that are not educated in the sport. They like it. They think that, that it's cool to push each other off or scream at each other. So you need a little bit of that. But um, I like, I like again, I like to be more professional. Um, but I also know that entertainment is very important. So... Uh, they can talk a little and they can act a little, but uh, but 
but not too much, you know, because then it goes away from really fighting skills and uh, your career in the sense of being a great fighter. Entertaining, being a great entertainer and a great fighter is two different things. Of course, yeah. you need both to be successful, but you don't need to uh, talk bad about somebody's family or scream or whatever. You, I don't think you need that, but that's my kind, my, my, my side of fighting, really. Yeah. Henry, are there differences between men and women in fighting or do you, you treat them the same? No, it's it, there's a big difference and that's why there's a reason for me not really having girls in my gym. Because uh, and you have to watch out nowadays when you say something like that because people think you 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 don't like women or something. But both mm -hmm. my wa wife is from Thailand. She's been training when she was young. My daughter has been training when she's young. But in my group, I don't have girls because... Um, it's a, it, it takes a different kind of uh, approach to train right. girls. The same as when you when you train ki uh, kids. Not everybody mm -hmm. can train kids, you know. Right. It's very you need a lot of patience, and it's different. I still love kids, and I still like that they train. The same with with girls. So I don't have girls in my gym, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't train yeah. girls in my gym. Yeah. But there's a big difference, of course, uh, in fighting. Uh, if you see it in the fights too, but the good thing for the girls is that they, they have the platform, they have the fights, they are on pay-per-view like the men, and they get paid, so that's really good for them, you know, but uh, but it takes a different approach, you know, girls and, uh, and, and guys, a much different approach. Yeah. Well, listen, man, I appreciate this. Thanks for taking the time and uh, really digging in. I've, I've, I want to do more in person. I want to come down and pick your brain, have dinner with you and kind of really dig in. And I want you to do the same to me. I want you to, you know, learn as much as you can from me. I, I'd be yes. glad to share anytime. So I appreciate your time. You're in boiling hot Florida, so I'm going to get you out of the car. But uh, Henry, car, it's so hot in my car. <laughs> Henry, thank you so but, much. Uh, no, okay? Really, really, we need to, we need to uh, connect. We need to connect yeah. for sure. I uh, I want you at my gym. I want you to uh, to talk to the group and uh, and be there and see what I do and uh, and then you show me. I have a little pool in my in my in my in the back of my house, but I don't think it's big enough for you and me to swim in there. But, uh, but <laughs> well, cool, cool. I, to talk I appreciate to you. that. Thank you very Listen, much for everything, Henry. I've never been punched in the face, but I can tell you this: there's a killer inside me. I don't know how to un. I haven't unlocked it uh, in terms of the the physical fighting, but there's a killer inside me who wants to be the best in the world and. Um, Whatever I do, that's my mentality. So I think that translates into what you're doing. So I'd, I'd be glad to like honor to help any way I can. All right. Thanks, Henry. See you soon. Take care. Yeah. Bye bye. Good luck. Take Destro Swim Towers. Gain strength in the water with a tower of power. Save $150 per double swim tower by using code BRETT, B R E T T, at checkout. DestroMachines.com. Vasa has been the go-to training tool outside of the pool for over 30 years. Vasa's products are ideal for developing power and proper technique in your swimmer's catch. Add a few Vasa trainers to your pool deck and it's like adding an extra lane to your swimming pool. Go to vasatrainer.com, use code BREAD at checkout and get 10% off anything from Vasa.